Another challenging concept to get our heads around is why P equals MC is allocative efficiency. We talk a lot about this, okay, and it makes logical sense okay, that a consumer pays simply what the marginal cost of producing a good was. Okay, fair enough, that seems fair, but why exactly is that allocative efficiency? What do we mean by allocative efficiency? Well, this video will explain that carefully. So, I've drawn on here a simple demand and supply diagram where the equilibrium market price is at P star and uh, quantities at Q star. Fine. I've also drawn there consumer and producer services. We all know what those are and how to label those. Okay. So, let's isolate the demand curve. Okay, let's actually understand what's going on with relation to the demand curve here. Well, at price P star, we know from the demand curve that there are several consumers that would have been willing to pay higher prices. Okay? They would have been willing to pay these higher prices there. In truth, because they pay only P star, they benefit. Okay? So the consumer surplus gives a measure of benefit. Now that's true up until the very last consumer, until the marginal consumer. Okay? That consumer, the very last consumer, was only willing to pay price P star. In which case, the benefits he derives from paying P star is just P star itself. So, the prices along the demand curve can give us a measure of utility, can give us a measure of benefit. Okay, but more than that, the demand curve can also give us a measure of marginal benefit. By showing us different prices along the demand curve, we know that the marginal consumer, the last consumer, is only willing to pay that price at which the actual demand curve tells us. All right, so the demand curve also tells us marginal benefit. All right. What about supply? Well, supply actually gives us an indication okay, of the cost producers are willing to supply at. Let's understand that further. So we know again, looking at the supply curve only, that there were producers willing to supply goods or services below price P star. Okay, so these quantities down here, okay, producers are willing to supply those quantities of goods and services at lower prices. By producing at price P star, instead, by selling at price P star, these producers are benefiting. Well, they're benefiting on those units, fair enough, with the price being at P star, but they're benefiting less and less as we produce more and more quantity. In fact, looking at the marginal increase, looking at the last unit produced, okay, suppliers needed the price to be at P star to encourage them to supply it. All right? If they produce Q star, okay, and the price is actually down there, they would not be willing to supply that. The price is not high enough to support that level of quantity. So that very last unit produced required a price of P star to encourage suppliers to supply it. Therefore, the supply curve can also give us a measure of marginal cost. The supply curve at a given price tells us the price needed okay, to encourage supply of that unit, to cover supply of that quantity. So it tells us the marginal cost of producing something along the supply curve. So we know that the demand is just the marginal benefit curve, it tells us the marginal benefit at given prices. We know that the supply curve is also the marginal cost curve, it tells us the marginal cost of producing something at different prices. And we know that because Prices give us a measure of utility, and prices also give us a measure of cost. Okay. Therefore, why does allocative efficiency occur where demand equals supply? In this case, where marginal cost equals marginal benefit. Why is that allocative efficiency? Well, let's look at either side. So let's move to the right of MC equals MB. Why any point to the right not allocatively efficient? Well, any point to the right, the marginal cost of producing something is more than the marginal benefits derived. So utility is not being maximised. In fact, utility is falling. We're getting le less utility each time by producing more units to the right. Okay, so we're not maximising utility. We're not allocating resources efficiently by producing to the right. Okay, because consumers are not benefiting. They're actually being harmed. Utility is falling. So that doesn't make any sense to produce to the right at this point, where marginal cost is more than marginal benefit. What about to the left, where marginal benefits are more than marginal costs? 
Well, it seems logical you might say, well, surely here the marginal benefits coming are way, way higher than the marginal costs. So surely it's efficient to produce at this level. Well, no, it can't be because we're trying to maximise total utility. Okay? How is total utility maximised? So if we're producing here, by producing more and more units, our marginal benefits are always going to be more than our marginal cost, up until MB equals MC. So as we keep increasing output, our total utility, total welfare will keep increasing until marginal benefit equals marginal cost. Any points to the left, to the left MB was greater than MC, so our total welfare could be increased more by producing more, up until MB equals MC. So at that point, our total welfare is maximised. By total welfare, we're maximising the area of consumed surplus and we're maximising the area of producer surplus. At any other points, we'd be increasing either consumer surplus or producer surplus, but by doing so, we're reducing the size of the consumer or producer surplus. All right? So when we talk about allocative efficiency, essentially we're maximising the sizes of both consumer and producer surplus. It's the point where consumers and producers together are most well off. It's the most efficient point of producing when we're trying to allocate resources. Therefore, it's the allocatively efficient point where total utility of both producers and consumers is fully maximised. So I hope that makes sense there. Uh, I'm also assuming in this diagram that there are no externalities. So when we talk about marginal benefits here, we're also looking at the marginal social benefit and the marginal social cost. This is assuming no externalities in production or consumption. hope that makes sense. This is a difficult concept to understand, but now um, it should make logical sense. And to go one stage further, why do we go to prices equal to marginal cost? Well, we know the demand curve is the average revenue curve, which is also the price. Okay, so we can simplify it to descend the price. In this case, the demand curve is equal to the marginal cost. And again, if we think about it logically, the consumer pays, okay, exactly what it costs to produce an extra unit. Well, that seems to, to be completely fair. At the same time, suppliers, it's fair for them as well, because they're not making any losses on that. All right, so that's why we say P is equal to marginal cost for allocated efficiency. Essentially, it's just demand equal supply. Hope that makes sense. See you next time.